Welcome back everybody to the XBA. We got March Madness Edition here for you guys today and we have the national title on the line. Virginia Tech, the big three against the one-man wrecking crew of Syracuse, Apollo St. Patrick. There's your starting lineups, guys. Syracuse on a little bit of a hot streak. They are the three seed in their respective region. And then, of course, Virginia Tech boasting that big three between Rakeem Savage, Marcus Anthony, and Malachi Hendricks. They're obviously the favorites. And, oh, what do you know? What do you know? It wouldn't be the national title game if we couldn't get a tip-off, right? But, of course, 2K being as glitchy as it is, uh, this was like the third take. I'll just say that right now. It's the third take for the tip-off. I will let you guys know that right here and right now. So, there we go. Tip-off goes to Virginia Tech. They're going to have the first possession. This is going to be a little bit longer of a highlight reel, guys, just because it is the national championship game. And normally some of these highlights with these March Madness games are about maybe three, four minutes for each each game. We're extending this out just a little bit. So there's gonna be a little bit of dead space in action and you're gonna to have to hear me talk and try to announce and do my best. Basketball announcing is not one of my fortes. I'd rather announce baseball or football. <laughs> it's because I know those sports a little bit better. But here's Marcus Anthony. Nice shot. Got the three point to go. It's three to two Kevin Harlan Greg Anthony Brent Berry you guys are not announcing it's all me tonight it's all me tonight unfortunately you guys can't hear the sweet silky voice of Kevin Harlan Scott Irving though he's gonna turn the ball over as Marcus Anthony's gonna lay it in and extend that lead out to three jump a little bit further in the first quarter we got an 11-6 game here Sylvester Forbes working on Hickman Hickman's gonna draw the foul well I should say Forbes draws the foul. Hickman gives the foul. It's currently 11 to 8. Here's Forbes going to find St. Patrick. He's working up against Marcus Anthony. It's not a matchup that I like. That's why you guys can see the double team there. I think Virginia Tech knows to try to shut down Apollo St. Patrick. In other words, we're starting to call him ASP. We can just call him ASP. The ASP. He's got, oh, he's got some Mamba mentality, right? Ooh, He's got some ASP. An ASP is a snake for those of you guys that don't know your animal kingdom okay we got an 11 10 game here virginia tech is holding on very slimly to that lead syracuse a very good opponent a very decent opponent so i feel like they're going to give them a challenge but you know if you're asp you got to take care of the basketball man you cannot allow virginia tech for easy baskets extra possessions extra baskets you just can't do it they're too good can't give them more chances and more opportunities to to beat you to win the game. But we see here they had the they had the shot with Hart. Marcus Anthony was backing his man down low, and they just didn't take it. So that's going to result in you know an open shot that they didn't take. Maggetti kind of forced it there. Now it's going to give Syracuse a chance here to take the lead, their first lead since the very opening possession of the game, and they are going to get the lead. So it's 16-15 here. Marcus Anthony. Nice pass, the behind the back, behind the head pass to Hickman. That's an insane pass by the National Player of the Year, Mark Anthony. Now here's Leroy Jenkins. And that two ball to go. 18-17, Marcus spotting up. He's gonna hit two more. So 19-18 at the end of the first quarter, guys. Very, very close game now Virginia Tech kind of has been on upset alert a few times here in this tournament and it's not really going to change with Syracuse it's a 19 to 18 game here at the start of the second quarter we got Leroy Jenkins picking up a foul he will hit both of his free throws nice little move there but gonna be no good nice defense by Syracuse here's ASP finding Sylvester Forbes in the corner gonna be no good so here comes Peyton He's going to pass it out to Malachi. He's got the three on the wing. So 31 to 24. Forbes. Another strong move. ASP gets the green. 33 to 28. Five point game here with three minutes to go. And here comes oof, Malachi Hendricks with a nice drive to the lane. Got some power in that, in that right hand, that slam dunk. Three ball, no good. 
Now at two minutes left here, here comes ASP. Pass here to Dunn. So Gary Dunn, what a name, what a name. Gary Dunn, picking up the foul. Here's Dunn again, gonna steal the basketball from Marcus Anthony, and this three ball shot's gonna be no good again. So we got a little bit of a drought going on for both teams. Here's Marcus going up against ASP. Oh, almost, almost a steal. And then look at Maggetti in the corner. Gonna miss, there's another wide open three. A chance for Virginia Tech and it's gonna be no good. So, still a two point game. Leroy Jenkins, gonna pick up two off that foul pickup. 35-35 game. Here comes Lowry, small man, Marcus. Does a great job of just defending him enough to where he had to make an uncomfortable shot. That's good defense. That's really good defense by Marcus. 61% for Syracuse, 50% for the Hokies. Eight assists. It's a close game. I don't think that there's any other way that you can spin it. It's just a really close game right now. And yeah, Virginia Tech had played Minnesota in the Sweet 16. Almost got upset there. Pulled away a little bit late. Louisville gave them a tough test, and then Memphis as well. So, you know, they're they're being tested. They're definitely being tested. They have a target on their back. And we can see Syracuse now extending their lead as Apollo St. Patrick is going to drive, and he gets the two plus the one, and he will hit that free throw. It's currently a six-point game, and here's Marcus with the step back. Going to be no good. He's getting a little bit cold. He's getting a little bit cold, and we saw it happen in the box score against Louisville how he just absolutely carried and not really any other Virginia Tech player kind of helped him out the Jan Sport was getting heavy and it's it's happening again and now he's getting cold and Virginia Tech not really getting any output from anybody else nine point lead for Syracuse and Marcus misses again here comes Forbes working on Marcus Another two shot good. It's 51 to 42. So here's Malachi. He had to step back, had to regather himself up again. Got the two to go. It's a seven point game now. Here's Rakeem Savage. Nice move. I'm gonna cut it back to five. So here's Leroy Jenkins. Three ball. Got it. Extend that out. About a seven point game. Nice little move there by Malachi to make it a five point game. So Q's, nearing the end of the third quarter, still hanging in there. Virginia Tech kind of cutting that lead down just a little bit. Now Jenkins spotting up for three off the back iron. Now Syracuse getting a little bit cold here. They're hanging in there though. They're hanging in, but then they allow the foul on Malachi as he's driving to the basket. So he will hit both of his free throws there. Another miss for Syracuse, like we talked about. They were hanging in, they were doing well up until they got cold. And now Virginia Tech is starting to get more output from their bench, plus Malachi is starting to put the team on his back here as well. Marcus, he's not on the court right now, and I think that that's, that's a, that's might, that might be a, a good thing for Virginia Tech, just to sit him down and make sure that he is kind of recollecting himself. And, you know, it's a big stage. It's a big stage. He's a freshman. Actually, all these guys are freshmen. <laughs> all these guys are freshmen. They might be one and dones. We'll have to, we'll have to see what the decisions are going to be. Uh, win or lose in this national championship game near the end of the video. Let's see what, what might be some decisions that these guys are going to be making here. But 56-55, Virginia Tech now taking the lead plus three. Is that two ball is going to go good? Here's a pile of St. Patrick who has been kind of shut down in the early going. He does get the two here to pull it within one. Here's Ramsey from a nice pass from Maggetti. It's going to be 57 to 60. Here's Nance. Oh, just, wow. Just wide open. It's going to be a tie game. 62-62. Mid part of the fourth quarter with 442. Apollo. Going to get the green to go. Marcus Anthony. Blocked. Sylvester Forbes with the block. Now here comes... Apollo, and he's just going to take it himself and get the green on the layup. 66-62. Forbes playing good defense down low against Maggetti. Now here comes Syracuse pushing it up the floor. Apollo 
We've seen it so many times in this tournament. With the alley-oops and the slam dunks, the emphatic dunks. And he gets this one to put Syracuse up six. Now here is Apollo pass to Irving. That's a slam dunk. The Orange are 15 and four in this last big run for them. Now Virginia Tech's gotta rely on Marcus Anthony. He was cold. Can he bring his team back? Can he bring him back? It's 70 to 66. Here is Irving with the foul. You would have liked to have him get the two, but this one rims out. This one rims out and it allows Virginia Tech to keep it within a five point game. Now here is the pass to Marcus. He misses with two minutes to go. Here comes Irving. Pass to Apollo St. Patrick. Now he's working on Malachi. That's, I don't like that matchup. He's got a lot of strength. No way. Oh, I hated that matchup, but dude, did Apollo St. Patrick just prove me wrong. Oh my goodness. The takeover of this fourth quarter by Apollo St. Patrick is stuff of legends, man. That is insane. That long wingspan, and he said, nope, I don't care. I'm just gonna go right, I'm just gonna blow right past you and just slam it in your face. That's unreal. Marcus Anthony gets the green to go here, 74 to 68. So it's still not completely over despite that hell of a play by St. Patrick. Six point game. Pass is gonna get stolen by St. Patrick. Marcus Anthony trying to do too much. ASP with the slam dunk up by eight. Marcus should get, you guys maybe you gotta hit a three here. You gotta pull it within five, I think. I, I think if you don't hit a three, the game's, the game's might, might be out of reach here, but Anthony gonna miss twice. Apollo with the block. I mean, he is taking over this fourth quarter. Here's St. Patrick again. No way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Off the double team, he said two people were on him, and he slams it in anyway. Marcus for two. Going to be no good. Up by 11 points. And at this point with the shot clock, about 15 seconds there's really no reason to foul yet you might get a turnover here maybe but Apollo gonna pass it off to Hill he gets the two 81 to 70 guys is gonna be your final score as Virginia Tech had no answer in the fourth quarter Syracuse Orange will win the national title in this XBA March Madness edition and I, I cannot say enough about Apollo St. Patrick in this tournament. He absolutely took over. He might have even taken over the way that Steph Curry kind of took over uh, at, David, at Davidson uh, many, many years ago. And, geez, I know, that, I know that Davidson didn't go super far, but the way that he took over, it made a lot of people notice. It caught a lot of people's attention. And, Maybe that's a bad comparison. Maybe you guys can think in the live chat here or the comment section what you guys think is, is a better comparison to Apollo St. Patrick's performance. But it's stuff of legends, guys. And as you can see, that was the NBA replacement team for the Syracuse Orange. But guys, the Virginia Tech Hokies, they have been on upset alert this entire tournament. And I, I would like to think that the reason for that is, is because they were so dang good. They're so dang good that everybody was looking at them and circled that game and said, you know what, we want to be the team to beat them. We're going to bring you our A game every time that we go up against you. And, uh, you know, that's part of the deal. You're a really good team. Everybody else wants to go up to your level, right? So I think Virginia Tech just got exhausted. I think they got worn down by trying to play in a lot of these pressure minutes and these pressure games. And eventually it caught up to them. And I mean, Syracuse is a really good, a really good basketball team in this XBA March Madness. And uh, I think Apollo and Forbes, that one-two combo, the big man and the shooting guard, I think that that's really what did him in. Marcus Anthony as well, not playing as well as he, we think that he should have. 
for being player of the year, having having received those honors, he should have been better in this national title game. And we actually have word from Marcus Anthony right here, guys, about his decision to either stay at college or go into the XBA draft. After a very terrific season at Virginia Tech, and your heartbreaking one at the same time. I'll announce my decision whether I forgo and go to the draft or stay back another year. My brothers, as I call them, Malachi and Rakeem, all want that championship when we all go to the league together. But things happen and God put us on another path. I know what my brothers are doing. I feel like I let the whole fan base down. We came so close to achieving our ultimate dream, and we just came up short of it. But it drive me to become a better competitor and teammate. So with that, I'd like to announce my decision. I am foregoing my chance of going to the league for another year and staying back to play at Virginia Tech for the upcoming season. Thank you. The effects of Marcus Anthony's decision to forego the XBA draft and stay for his sophomore season at Virginia Tech is sending ripple effect, is sending waves throughout the mock draft for the XBA season in 2020. He was one of the top five, maybe top eight players in this draft class. And we can see that Apollo St. Patrick was starting to bump up. This was Draft Express's big board rank prior to the NCAA tournament. He was rated as the 21st best player on their board, 2K rank at 23rd, NBA.com at 20. So Apollo St. Patrick has now bumped himself up into the top five with players like Jamal and Colo that he ended up knocking out. For Kansas State, we have Jedra Sobchak for BC Barcelona, which we will actually start to see some EuroLeague action as well, guys. So now that the Final Four and the March Madness edition is completed, we're now going to be looking at the EuroLeague players and guys like Sobchak. We've got, let's see if we can scroll down here, um, Artem Kozlov for Moscow. Another player here, such as Anton Seeger for Germany. Big time power forward slash center. So there's some good players in that EuroLeague that we're going to go and scout. We're going to see some gameplay of that Final Four. For EuroLeague, it's going to be fun. And I think that once we see everybody, we'll have a better understanding of what these players can do. And obviously, the scouting reports will be incoming after the EuroLeague is finished up. So that way we can, again, get some gameplay of these players and see where that they're going to fall and who you as a community, who you guys think that your team should take. What position of need is your XBA team uh, needing? And what do you think is the player that's best going to fit that? But we can see Marcus Anthony is not here anymore in this top five. It has since been reworked. These numbers will increase for Apollo St. Patrick and Zagarach based on their NCAA tournament performances. They are going to go starting to fly up these boards, and uh, I think we'll start to see the effects of that the further we go on in the playoffs. Okay, so we're going to actually see Marcus Anthony next season in March Madness, so that'll be kind of fun to see if he can continue to dominate and, uh, and actually put Virginia Tech again in the national championship game. So we will see you guys in the next one. Like I said, leave a like if you like this thing, and we'll see you then. As always, peace.